class of the our entire proper whatever we have discussed the CB part. So so far before proceeding, because I know that many people are yet to join or will be joining us in some while. Maybe before proceeding, let's go and recapitulate. And those whoever are there, like you are all watching me, etc. I'll request pen and pen, uh, notebook and just start the countdown also. See, this is the way, like your first answer I'm asked, means I'm starting today's last with your most common answer that how do we prepare ourselves? How do we revise entire syllabus when we know that the examination is around the corner or the examination is on the next day itself? So that remedy I'm going to tell you, that strategy I'm going to tell you, that, that is what I'll be sharing with you, that what exactly you need to see. Now let's go by the flow. And you should only write the key points, not everything, only the key points. Right. So how we will start? First of all, you know that we all have done the CB Act SCR. So these are the mother act, and these you should know. Because otherwise, if you don't know these two chapters, the entire doing this securities law may not be fruitful for you. So under yeah. the CB Act and the SCRA Act, how you will write, how you will know. See, first we started with the SCRA. Under the SCRA. The process of making application to stock exchange is there, right? And secondly, the word, the definition, most common definition of it, it securities is there in the S. So these are the things that you should look into the SCR, right? Then we have went into CB. Now, under the CB, sir, what we have done under the CB, see, we have looked into the various aspects. We have studied about the SAT, SAT, SAT composition, if you remember the 15T, section 15T, which talked about the composition, that securities appellate tribunals should have judicial and the technical member, right? They should have the presiding officer. That is what we have studied for the SAT. Now, once we are done with the SAT and then we have done about the CP. We have also under this chapter understood the different powers, like right? powers of central government. Of course, power of central government is to make rules, right? To supersede the stock exchange, etc. Similarly, we have done the power of CB. Power of CB is to amend bylaws of stock exchange whenever they want. They can make a regulation. And I told you for this purpose only, because they have a power of regulation. You will keep seeing that the SEBI is bringing in many such regulations from time to time. Why? Because they have got this power under the Act, right? So that is the second one. Role of power, uh, role of central government and the power of uh, the SEBI. Third thing that we have moved towards the power of stock exchanges. Where we have studied that stock exchanges, what power they have. See, their powers are limited. Because as I told you that stock exchange are acting under the stock CB. So stock exchange ultimately decides any power on this broker, stock broker or intermediary, beyond which they do not have any power per se. So their power gets limited, right? These are the power of the stock exchanges. Once we have done with these two chapters, the major two chapter you say core forming part of our curriculum. Then straight away, I will request that you people should, at the time of revision, go to the another act, Depository Act. What is the Depository Act? Depository Act is all talking about the regulation of depository, that how the depositories are regulated, how both NSDL and CDSL perform in the market, how the process of remat and demat goes on. Right? That is what we have done. Like. After understanding this demand process, demand process, we have also done about the quarterly audit under the depository act. There is a reconciliation audit and there is a concurrent audit by both NSGL and CDSS. So these area we have covered. Now after covering these area, 
then it's time you can make a move towards the regulation. Under the regulation, also I say is that it's better that first you do the insider trading. Now, under the insider trading regulation, what are the key salient features? Under the insider trading, we try to understand the definition of insider. We also understood the definition of connected person who can be con considered as a connected. Right? Then we understood that under the insider trading, the main concern is all about oopsie, unpublished price sensitive information. Like you are not supposed to share any information which is not public. Like financial results, buyback, merger, demerger, all these information you can't share outside. Because otherwise, some people will make benefit from it or investor will be suffering from it. So for that purpose, the CB has framed prohibition of insider trading regulation, PIT. Now under PIT, beside this, we also discuss about regulation three and four. Regulation three, which further says, even not to communicate, that's forget about trading. Even you are not supposed to communicate those information, except for legitimate purpose. And the legitimate purpose also, I have defined that what exactly you mean by the legitimate so these were the things that we have covered under the insider trading. After this, under the insider trading, we have understood the concept of trading plan. That those who are connected throughout the year can come out with a trading plan. Right, like MDCO, etc. Then some disclosure, like initial disclosure, continuous disclosure. Initial disclosure, once you become the KMP or once you become the promoter or once you become the director. Continual disclosure is that you will disclose in a quarter if your volume of trading goes more than 10 lakh. So that was we have done in the insider trading. Now, once you are done with the insider trading, I will always suggest go immediately next chapter to the delisting. Under the delisting, what exactly the thing was that? Under the delisting, we understood that in case I want my company to get delisted. I can get it. I have all the power to get it delisted. But then there are procedures. Some cases there will be compulsory delisting. Means when the stock exchange will tell me to get directly delisted for some reason, maybe I am non compliant with certain provision. I have made some violation. Which CB may ask me to get delisted. That is a compulsory. And second reason is a voluntary whereby. I am considering get my shares delisted. In a voluntary delisting, again further there are two parts. The one is on the basis of like exit opportunity and another one is without exit opportunity. Sir, what is the difference? Difference we discussed that day. The major difference is that say for example, if as a like a promoter of a company or acquire I am getting my shares delisted from all the stock exchanges, from all, then I will go for this opportunity. But if I'm not getting it delisted from all, rather I'm continuing to remain listed on one of the stock exchanges, which is having national wide terminal, then I will not give any exit opportunity. So that is a difference. And in case of exit opportunity, price will be determined as per takeover regulation, right? What we will do, we will make a public announcement, then we'll dispatch later of offer, and then we will offer the bidding period during which shares will be tendered. And delisting is the only process where we follow the reverse book building. Right? If you all can recollect, I'm sure that you are able to recollect and you are understanding also how the flow we are doing all about. Uh, let's at least get some feedback from the chat box that I'm sure that you all are getting what exactly we are discussing and you are trying to understand that how to recapitulate the entire curriculum in 15, 20 minutes. Right? Yeah. So moving to the back to the next, like once I told you about this, now next comes, he says, okay, this process that you told us that how we should go about and that. 
delisting process. After understanding delisting, I will say here, you should go to the two chapters, which are like mutual fund and CIS. Very small chapters, like mutual fund is basically involvement of sponsor, trustee, and then AMC, asset management company, which basically helps you in monitoring the activities of the mutual fund. In the mutual fund, we understood the various categories. There are plus like open-ended mutual fund scheme may be there or close-ended. Then we further understood various categories, maybe in the form of hybrid scheme, it may be in the form of growth-oriented scheme, it may be in the form of high growth oriented scheme. High growth means they are more risky because they invest in the very volatile market. And growth oriented, basically they invest in the stabilizing market so that dividend income will be a consistent income for you. So these are the various uh, scheme also we have done under the mutual fund chapter. Right, so mutual. Immediately after mutual fund, you can go directly to the CIS, Collective Investment Scheme. The moment you go to the CIS, it becomes very easy for you because mutual fund and CIS more or less correlated. And CIS is in the mind of all of us because we have just done it recently. Basically controlling the pool of funds by the CIMC, Collective Investment Management Company. And they have certain duties and powers. They are supposed to act due diligently. They are supposed to act on behalf of investors. And if you are going for the CIS, it should be open for 20, uh, that minimum 90 minutes. The window period will be 90 days. You should get it be, sorry, listed with the stock exchange within six weeks from the closer. Right? All this we have covered. So, in fact, the CIS are governed by the CBMA. Once you are done with the mutual fund and CIS, then I will say, now come back to those chapters like SEBI, ESOPs regulation, share based employee benefit retention. We all know we have covered this para that in order to retain the employee, the company offers shares at discount to this employee, right? And it is at a discount, maybe 10, 20%, whatsoever from the market. Why basically to retain the employees so that they will continue to work for the company. There are three stages in the ESOP. Granting, vesting, exercise. So grant is that one you are giving. Vesting is that when they are entitled to exercise. And then last thing is the exercise. In this ESOP also we have understood that promoters are not allowed to allow participate. Even the directors, if they are holding 2% or more, they are not allowed to entitled for ESO. Independent directors are not at all allowed for ESO. These are the things that we have covered under the ESOP share based employee benefit regulation. And in fact, we have also covered when we have discussed about the ESOP various schemes. If there can be ESOP plan, there can be ESPS, employee stock purchase scheme. In this scheme, the basically what is then company purchase from the market and then give it to the employee at a discount price. It. So that is a purchase scheme. Then it can be done. We have also done one thing that the scheme can be implemented directly by the company or through trust. There may be involvement of trust also. Right? Trust basically acts as an intermediary. If trust is there, pass a resolution indicating that yes, there will be a scheme through trust only that you have to write in the resolution. These two we have done. We have also done about the stock appreciation right, SAR. Stock appreciation right is nothing. It's just the difference between the banking price and the today's market price. Right? Instead of taking shares and paying the company money, I will ask you that, okay, I will not pay this money. You should just give me the difference amount. And that is my benefit. Right? That is a stock appreciation right, SAR. After SAR, we have covered the other area. The other area in the sense, after SAR, we have covered retirement benefit scheme, health benefit scheme. So these all are covered under the ESOP. Once you are done with the ESOP, immediately the related one is the sweat equity. Sweat equity is given for the intellectual know-how and for IPR. Right? Basically to the employees as a ex gratia or you can say as a commission. As when you are giving how you evaluate it, it will be valued by the merchant. Who will be appointed by you? 
right? And here, good thing is that even the promoters can participate. In fact, I can give you the clear example. Like all the startup, we all know Flipkart and this Amazon, and they all have initially come as a startup. Like Grofers and all, they all are the startups. So initially, you know, the startup promoters do subscribe and do get credit equity shares under the certificate regulations, right? Now, see, after covering this, like we started with the SCRA, CB Act, then I go through the prohibition of insider trading, then I mutual fund cis collective investment scheme depository act we have covered now just now i said complete share based employee benefit and this way the next thing you should go to the lodr this is the flow that i prefer see it may differ again i am not saying that it should be bound on all of you that you should follow the same pattern it may differ so we should not be worried about the flow but then this is recommendable because this will help you in exam to go in a flow wise. Next, you should come to the LODR, listing obligation and disclosure requirement. There in the listing obligation and disclosure requirement, what we do, basically we have come across certain obligation common for all companies, like appointment of compliance officer, certain policy requirement, right? Then we have also covered apart from the policy requirements, the, say for example, investor grievance mechanism is again common. So after reading the common obligations, then we have understood the board structure that how many independent directors should be there. What are the committees under the LODR? The risk management committee, I told you, and there is a, when there are something new, do focus more on the new topics. So risk management committee is a new committee under the LODR. Then after reading the role of committee and the directors, I took you through the material subsidiary, material RPT. If material RPT is there, it will require approval, irrespective whether it's falling under 188 of the company act or not. Right? After doing this material subsidiary, material RPT, then we have done some quarterly compliance. We have also done some event-based compliances. That what are the event-based compliance required under the so this will complete your LODR. Now, once the LODR, you go to the takeover because takeover and buyback, I personally believe are correlated to each other, right? Why sir, you believe it correlated? Because they're correlated in the sense, takeover and buyback more or less when we were doing in our one of the class also, or on buyback on the same day, we have also felt how the flow is very common. Like under the takeover, the process is that if I am acquiring more than 25% or 25% of a company, I should make open and I should accept from public first. Right? That is what the takeover is. And even takeover says if you are holding 25% or more already, then you should not exceed 5% in a year. That is what the takeover says. So we have studied this. The takeover may also be get uh, triggered through control. Takeover, there will be some common type of a question. Like say, for example, only direct acquisition. Like I'm asking you people, at least sometime I should make you people interactive because you people also need to be equally participant. Like one question I'm asking you is direct. It is only direct acquisition which triggers takeover. True or false? It is only direct acquisition which triggers takeover mode. I'm just waiting for the answers. Let every one of you should be involved. It is only the direct acquisition which triggers the takeover code. Yeah, now people are replying well that it is false. 
very true it is false because the reason being rather it can be through indirect acquisition as well how come indirect we have yesterday discussed that in case of 80 percent of your acquisition of assets or in case of 80 percent of your market capitalization capturization or in case of 80 percent of your turnover if all these are triggered then what will happen then this is the indirect acquisition right so even in case of indirect acquisition this takeover code will be triggered now takeover process we have understood that we start with making public announcement then in the takeover we got to know a new thing called detailed public statement you have to give this dps and such los letter of offer after dispatching letter of offer then offer open the window period and then make a payment and close the process and we remember it by by unique number 5571010 right i am sure that this number you must have retained or saved it in your mobile to remember it very well isn't it at times i feel like my voice is going like a transmitter bbc or aztec like if i am saying something right now after 2 minutes i hear the response from you okay so in the public and you know, this process we have understood the takeover and in the takeover lastly we have done some exemption that in case it is between the immediate relative it is exempted if it is between the promoter it is exempted so please do focus on the exemption part as well right the moment you've done with the takeover code i immediately require all the students or i request everyone to go to the buyback why immediately buyback because the buyback is a more or less same buyback talks about taking the sales from the market how you will take you will make a buyback offer buyback offer is allowed up to 25 percent uh, when you're going for the 25 percent of uh, to the extent then you go by the shareholders but if it is within 10 percent only the board can do it. but buyback is again done through various process like through tender offer through odd lot and through open market tender is more acceptable so tender we have studied in very that for the tender offer, we'll make a public announcement, right? And for the tender offer, once we make the public announcement, then we will go for the filing of the LOF with the CB. Then LOF will be dispatched to the stock shareholders, and then we'll offer the tendering period, and then we will make the payment. Of course, in the buyback, takeover, and delisting, all in these three, we are opening the escrow account. Only difference is that in delisting, 100% is depositing. And in the buyback and takeover, 25% is deposit in the escrow, right? So buyback also we have understood in the open market, we have done both the process like stock exchange and this another one called, what is the name of the another one? Building, means through the bidding method. So if it is through book building, like say, for example, bidding method, then bidding method and the stock exchange doesn't require LOS. They only require public announcement, right? And the bidding is a very unique process where it requires prior public announcement. So we retained all those points like this, that what are the future, exceptional future in a particular thing. And we retain it very well, right? So once you are done with this buyback and the LOS, uh, this takeover, then it's time you should go for a small chapters like Ombudsman Dragons. It is nothing, it is a scores based, what are the complaints that can be addressed by the sports? What are the complaints that cannot be covered by the sports? Like many bogus complaints not relating to the securities market will not be covered by the sports. So this you should write it down very clearly that there are certain complaints which will not be addressed by the sports. Sports is also available in mobile now. What is the timeline? We all remember that within 30 days, right? They need to respond. Otherwise, this score problem will be escalated. So these points you should remember in the ombudsman. Then also do the one CB intermediaries evaluation, where we have got to know about the various intermediaries and how they are regulated. What are their general obligations? Like keep a copy of their certificate, keep a code of conduct, 
right minimum net worth to be maintained by them they need to give a compliance certificate annually on 1st of april so all this process we got to know in the intermediaries regulation do remember some of the key intermediaries roles and power like we have discussed registrar bankers underwriters portfolio managers custodians eventual trustee so do know about their roles and powers so see now till this moment i took only 27 or 28 minutes and then i recapitulated the entire cb part or the securities law now i do not personally think that there should be any question left from your side that sir how do we revise during the exam if you write down the flow in your paper and you go the same methodology see revision means not to go into the paper every time see if we are going i also could have made it come to page number this come to page number this but then this is not the revision revision is that in short i should know the best that how i will go about it right so so far it's clear to every one of you yes or no ah uh, let me get yes or no then i will move ahead from every side yes yes from everyone everyone let let all other participate because today let's participate and I, as i told you after taking the interesting icdr i will open the window for the question answer and i am sure that you people having a question answer it's not like that you are going to listen from me only yeah thank you so everyone consented yes 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 that means i as i told you i always believe either i am teaching extraordinary or you are getting me text ordinary right it may be the other way not to mention clearly now making a move what's the another area like what is this that this is all about icr issue of capital and disclosure requirement now before moving to that i will just let me take you to the study mat page number 450 i guess 450 page number i am i right uh, so yeah i am right in fact i will request all of you to come to page number 400 50 of your mat application supported by block the mount see we see it as a asba asba what is this asba asba is all about that how we block the amount what is the concept of asba you must be knowing so I, for the, just for the sake of you people i am repeating and then we'll just do some marking that yes because many of you people have a like query at times that what exactly is asba we do not use it asba is nothing it's just a process whereby you are blocking your amount try to understand the difference what was the earlier scenario the earlier when you used to ipo when i am investing into i think it was the normal scenario the normal scenario used to be like i will give a check to the company company will deposit in its bank account and then once the company decides whether to allot or not then they will communicate to me if they have allotted well and good if they have not allotted they used to give me the return check now what happened say for example i am investing for 1 lakh and if it is lying on the for the process part for 15 days do you think for 15 days you have lost your interest these are the common things that you know better isn't it that you are, your amount is blocked and you have lost the interest so in order to ensure that that part is being taken care of the government has launched the asba process what is this this is an application which contains an authorization to self certified syndicate bank see all the banks are not self certified in fact some registered banks are self certified but nowadays you will if you look at the scenario most of the banks are authorized as a scs in self certified syndicate so asba has used this concept what they are saying they are saying ki 
if these bank confirm that this amount is blocked for you, then company can go ahead with the application because they have got a kind of a confirmation or a surety mm -hmm. from the banks. Once they get this confirmation, they will block you. They will go ahead with the application. If your application is processed and allotted, they will take the money from bank. If the process is not allotted, then your bank will release the amount. And when the bank will release the amount, so since the bank is yours bank only, and in your bank, you can keep earning interest as, as well on this amount. So the loss of interest is protected. Just one thing, there is any process also for self-certified banking, uh, self-certified syndicate bank registration? Yes. In any bank desirous of applying this first, they need to apply to the SEBI. Otherwise, SEBI will not process or SEBI will not give all the companies the tag of self-certified syndicate. So this is the process. This is why AFPA is used widely. If you look, come to the page number 451, Rather, in the picture, you will get more clarity. See, in the picture on the page 451, you can understand. First, the person is submitting the form, whether manually or electrically. Both processes is allowed. You see, he is giving to whom? Self-certified being bank. The bank verifies the detail, whether you are having the money or not. Because see, if I say, I am subscribing for one and a half lakh shares and I don't have amount in the bank, how the bank will confirm? So the bank will verify the detail. Once the bank verifies the detail, they will say whether it's an NSC, whether it's a BSC, like ASPA system, we will inform them. If you don't worry, the person has the money, you proceed that way. Right? Then the NSC, the big deal starts and the process gets completed. The moment the process gets completed, you can look at the next to the NSC. There is a window that on E plus 9, when there is a closure, after closure, either you will be allotted shares or not. So if you are allotted shares, shares will come to you, see this arrow, shares are coming to you, all right, shares are coming to you. And then on the other side, you will see on this tab, they are saying that they will request self-certified syndicate bank since now we are creating the shares, you please release the amount to the company because we are giving the shares. And what if we are not giving the shares? I will not do anything. Because simply, I am not required to do anything because this money will remain in the bank only. The person has not got the shares. This process is called as ASPA. Similarly, but nowadays we will say, okay, sir, still as by is on. The requirement see asba has become a process for the other but for the retail investors now a new process has come which you people must be knowing upi how many of you let's before again moving to the next how many of you are using google pay or phone pay whether having any idea fair idea fair any enough idea yes or no by just indicating yes or no just say Yeah, so we all are using it. And how many of you have used the IMPS service? Instant money immediate pay payment service. We say that instant the money will be transferred. That is immediate payment service. I am immediate payment P and S is the service. Okay, we all are fair enough well having a good idea about the IM IMPS. See, similarly like IMPS, CV has come out with the UPI in a phase-wise manner. Why UPI is a unified payment interface? Unified payment interface. Why the CV has come out with this? Because the reason that we felt that, you know, that entire IPO nowadays, you must be wondering that how come the IPO gets closed so soon? If you look at the IPO, most of the, like, if you are regular to the TV, you will get to know the IPOs are getting closed very soon. Like the IPOs are, just coming out and then getting closed, right? <clears throat> the IPO, that is a scenario of IPO. So in the IPO, you will be noticing that the process has got reduced, the timeline has got reduced, only for one reason. What is the reason, sir? 
the only reason is that we have made like how fast we can process the application. Now for the retail investors, a UPI mechanism is so with the UPI sir, how it is going to help everyone, how the process will get reduced. Hear me out. You will understand that. UPI is saying you don't need to go to the bank. In the ASPA process, there is a two way. One manual electronic. So you know better. When we all have a manual option, people do opt for manual. They go to the bank, submit the application, and make the process cumbersome. Because bank also verify the application, take two or three days to process. The UPI mechanism is a straight away blocking from your account. When you are having a UPI, what you will do? You will give your bank account in the application when you are filling up the online application. And once you give the details of your UPI, it's a unique code which you generate, it will verify the OTP will be sent to your mobile. Once you confirm with that OTP, the amount will be blocked. So see, even in five minutes with this mobile, in five minutes, I can block my amount for the IPO through UPI, which through self-certified syndicate bank or the ESBA process can take some time. So this is the biggest help we are getting from the UPI. And that is why UPI mechanism is used by now. Now come to page 453. There was phase one, phase two, and phase three. Right? And if you below the phase three, if you notice, there is a cap still at present for 2 lakhs. It is UPI. If you are making investment of 2 lakhs, then it is to be UPI. So there is a cap. They are keeping it, keeping on it, right? And it is very clear, just read it, that whether all categories are allowed, it's saying only retail investors. Because basically, if you look at the scenario, I will say only the basically, we are the retail and residential investors are there who submits the application in, you can say, physical form. Basically, CB also knows that they have brought in this concept of UPI, right? This as by UBI, UPI is clear before we make a move to the ICDR. Because in ICDR, this topic I will keep telling you. So you need to understand so that you don't get confused that what certain new things you are talking about, right? Next comes the green soup of mechanism. Now, this concept, I'm sure that you all have gone through. But question comes to what is green shoe? What do you mean by the green shoe? We all have a black shoe, brown, white shoes even we use. But then green shoes that we never use. And it looks very awkward, don't you think? Yeah, and the green shoe option mechanism actually is originated, not in India. It is originated somewhere in the outside, like basically concepted, conceptualized from the UK. But then... The thing is that under the CV, the green of shoe option is a mechanism which is called price stabilizing mechanism. Just write it, price stabilizing mechanism. But how you stabilize price with the green shoe? See, at times when IPO comes out, what happens? We all have a lot of expectations from the IPO. Isn't it when you invest in IPO, we all want a good return. But unfortunately, in many cases, what happens immediately, say, for example, IPO was opened at a rupees 110. 110. We all invest with the mindset at least 130 per listed on a so that we make money. But then, unfortunately, when they get listed, in many of the cases, CV has noted the price goes down. Means, in fact, the public has subscribed at 110. But the price is going 195. In those scenarios, the price goes down so below that the investor uses the fat at the very beginning. Right? Because you all have invested in the, your your shares of IPO with a big, like, uh, of course, expectation that I will make some good money. But then, unfortunately, because of that price goes down, we end up losing. So, in those scenarios, CV has come up with a green shoe option. It is a stabilizing process and there is a stabilizing attempt. Is this mechanism before you go theoretically and illustration you see? Because there is a hell lot one and half page illustration. But then I am just telling in short what is the mechanism. 
see the mechanism is that say for example i am the stabilizing agent for the company so during the ipo itself the company will say that stabilizing agent will also get some money uh, some shares say for example they are giving me 15000 shares and 1 lakh share is ipo so 1 lakh shares into 100 rupees ipo price makes 100 crore right, right. Uh, sorry 100 lakhs because uh, 1 lakh shares are there so ipo is of 1 crore right in this ipo size of 1 crore the the company will give me 15000 shares that will be plus not included in this one because this will be additional share will not be used it will be used for price stabilizing how i will do the stabilizing i will tell you but first try to understand so that means normal whatever the ipo is there that shares will be there plus they will give me this 15000 shares as a stabilizing agent so sir from where you will get the money sir we have a question as a stabilizing agent how you will get the money are i will take the money from the lender lender i will find it out maybe any banks etc right i will take the money from the lender and then will invest 15000 shares and i will get 15000 shares at the same price but i will not use those shares now ipo is done and the shares are listed so if ipo is done shares are listed and if it is going up like 100 was the issue price it is 110 120 130 i don't need to do anything because the price is already stabilized it's good for the market what i'll do i will return those 15000 i will return means i will return those 15000 shares to the lender lender means bank agar right and the banks will be happy that okay the shares are returned against their money so yes of course my issued share capital now will increase it will be 1 lakh plus this 15000 but now at least my price is stabilized that is the first scenario in case the market is going to second scenario what may happen instead of 100 the price may come down to 9 9095 maybe at times maybe 5 9 then again 80 90 it will be like that now the price is going down so it's a concern the stabilizing agent will do what the stabilizing agent will do. stabilizing agent here will exercise one what he will do he will start purchasing the shares from the market because the price is too low isn't it price is too low and he will start purchasing and since he has having 15000 shares ka money that is like 15000 shares and you multiply into 100 so he is having 1 lakh 15000 uh, sorry 15 lakh right he is having 15 lakhs is in kp and if he is purchasing the shares at a price of 85 90 etc don't you think he has enough money because he is already having the shares of 100 so if he is purchasing at 85 and 90 wala of course he is having the higher means a uh, sufficient fund in its account because it is having a 15 uh, sorry 15 lakh amount in its pocket out of which if he purchase at 80 ka price pe or 85 ka price pe it doesn't impact at all because ultimately what he is doing he is doing or he is purchasing or brought backing the shares from the market now he will continue to do that right he will have the he will have more and more shares in his bucket now what happened when say for example he has got these shares and he dealt into those shares now the stabilizing agent will be required to return those 15000 shares to the lenders right at the end so what will happen because stabilizing agent already done or executed a trading into the market he has got some shares he has sold some shares at a higher price right now what will happen because of this fluctuation whatever the difference amount in the 15000 will be there maybe say for example out of this 15000 shares 
he has left with only 7,000 shares after doing some trading in the market to stabilizing it. So the company will tender the owners to allot him further 8,000. The company will allot the differential amount. And of course, at a price only, it's not like that it will not be at a price. And with these, like whatever the balance amount he was having in his PT, maybe say for example, 6, 7,000, and whatever the company will pay him, maybe say for example, 8,000 in case 7,000 was the balance. So this seven plus eight will make 15, and then he will give it back to the lender from where he has taken. Now, sir, what will happen that, like the new issuance of shares, don't you think company will suffer? Yeah, company will be impacted, but then what will happen ultimately the company's financials are impacting, but the market is regularized because the stabilizing agent by way of trading, he has stabilized the market. See, in the normal practice also, I will conclude with that. In the normal practice also, you have seen in the market. It depends all about the trading. When some trading happens a lot in the particular shares, then you will see share price will start jumping higher and higher. Why? For one reason, the price will start jumping higher and higher because they think that, okay, this shares is going to be the good butter for the future. So they start more and more trading in particularly those scripts. But when there are lesser trading in a particular script, then because of the frequency going down, the shares price at So there is a mechanism to establish the particular price of a particular script, not the entire market, but particular script. And that is the job of a stabilizing agent. And this process is called the green shoe. First company, in India, to use this concept was the ICICI Bank, which has used this process in its public issue when it has come out through book build. Right? ICICI Bank was fortunate enough to use the first concept. So, this is all about the green shoe option. So, now we know the ASBA process, UPI, green shoe option. Now, I'll take you to the ICD. Right? So far, I assume that since you people are not saying, not sharing anything, not wanting to share anything, I keep assuming that you people are understanding. Because for writing on the chat box, you need some assistant also, time for you, right? So I'm assuming that yes, we all are understanding and we all are on the same page. Okay. Now moving to the IPO. Before I will take you to the final, what is the process of IPO? Can you see some presentation on the screen? Just confirm through chat box. Okay. IPO related. Yeah. Now, why basically I first will take you through this presentation and then we'll go to the book to mark. First, let us understand there are certain minimum criteria for coming out with the IPO. Every company means don't think that every company comes out with the IPO and then they will be deciding the IPO side. It depends. It depends that how they will come out with the IPO. Right? So, sir, how the IPO is regulated? IPO is regulated. See, there are some primary conditions. They should have a net tangible assets of 3 crore. You can see on the screen, average. Then they should have an average net profit of at least 15 crore. In the last three years, and then net worth of at least 1 crore. Now, sir, why they are requiring this? Because otherwise, if they are going on the market, I will be assured that the investors will be benefited. So, to ensure and to make sure that the investors are benefited, the investors do benefit from this IPO, I need to ensure the company's credentials should be good. And if the company has changed its name, then 50% of that should come from the change of name activity. Say, for example, if my company's name was ABC Energy Limited, now I'm no longer into energy. I thought of starting some infrastructure and finance, and I'm making the name ABC Infrastructure and Finance. 
compromise 50 percent of the income in the previous year should have come from the infrastructure and finance business sir what if it is not coming from the infrastructure and finance business if it is not coming from the infrastructure and finance business then <coughs> you will be not allowed to be falling under the ipo eligibility condition sir, just tell me one thing sir what if i do not satisfy all these conditions if these conditions are not satisfied so sir then what we will do in that case you will come through the book building what is this book building book building is a process where you come through the lay let you do not decide the price you leave it to the shareholders to decide the price of your scheme if you are coming through book building today right, then there is an exception There is exceptional that it should be through book and in the book building if five percent of your offer you should reserve it for the qiv the qiv qiv means qualified institutional buyers the qualified institutional buyer who they are qualified institutional buyer are just like the investors financial institutions or portfolio manager invest institutions are registered as qib with the same and qip at the qualified institutional placement what they we offer them is governed only for qibs because only the qib can participate in the qip so qib are the one who are registered with the cv as a qib for the because they are a high net worth financial institution etc like say for example icic right as the fc group IC, SDFC, financial uh, SDFC mutual fund. So these are qualified as a QIB. So once they are qualified as a QIB, you have to ensure that in the IPO you are going to give 75% reservation to the QIB. In case you are not satisfying all those conditions, and you are going through the book building, because we have to give you the option. It should not be like the end road. These conditions can't be an end to you. So, sir, how we will remember these conditions? Just remember the PAN, PA. The P stands for the profit, the A stands for the asset, and the N stands for the net worth. So, this is called PAN. Right? I hope you all have written it. Very easy to understand three conditions PAN, PAN, profit, asset, net worth. You know that I also remember it in a very easy way. Profit, of course, in any case, should be higher 15. Then out of one or three, not to confuse myself, I remember that if I'm talking about assets, it's a very big word, net tangible assets. That means three, big amount. And net worth, very small, a very small amount one company. Now see, I will always remember those conditions for the IP. Right? So these are the conditions for the IP. But anyone can come out with IPO. No, there are some on the screen you can see condition precedents. Means certain prerequisite before you decide to come for the IP. You have to follow with those certain prerequisites. What are those prerequisites? First, that the issuer and the promoter should not have been barred from accessing the market. Right? Second, if any of the promoter and they are barred from the capital market, say for example, I will say, okay. I am a director or I am a promoter, I am not barred. Right? Promoter or promoter. Will. But I am a director in another company which is barred. Then I will, I will not. Allow. The best way is that then they resign from the directorship of that company. Yes. But if you are continuing, that is why directorship role is important. If you are continuing on those companies which are debarred from accessing the market, you can't come out with that. Then if you are a willful defaulter and you are a fugitive of so out of all those conditions, you know that how I remember three condition because see if in exam, IPO, initial public offer, a brief is coming. How I will start? First, I will write that under what circumstances you can come. And second, I will write what are the conditions to be fulfilled before coming to the IPO. So how I remember? I will remember with the three words. Wow. P-O-R. P-O-W. 
Sir, what exactly the full form? Are you people writing the full form or you people are just listening to me only? And just to ensure double check, like do you people also write on your own or you people keep checking me that yes, sir is suggesting something, let's hear this around me. POW stands, P means barred from the market. O means offender, fugitive offender. And W is a willful default. So now see that we will easily remember these conditions to write in the uh, our condition precedence. Now coming back again to those, see, I said some of the condition, I, I liked it very honestly, like when you people are discussing and answering each other, superb, very well. So like we were discussing some of the condition, like you have to uh, comply with this normal conditions and then you have to make sure your promoters are not barred, your promoters are not declared as a willful defaulter, your promoters are not fugitive offender. If you satisfied all these conditions, then only you are allowed to come out with the I. Because otherwise, see, the primary logic why they do not allow is very clear because we all have seen in a lot of recent scams, I would not like to put the names of those scams, but we all are pretty much aware that these scams have really been created a problem for the 
that is the perhaps main intention of CB not to allow this kind of a promoters to come out with the IP. Now, question comes, he said, what about the partnership firm, etc., or say, for example, the net tangible asset, profit, net worth, whatever you have shared is of company. But say, for example, my partnership firm has converted into a company recently, or the company has turned down a division separately. So, how I will calculate because it become very challenging. We now partnership firm never used to prepare balance sheet. So, how they will get to know what was the net worth, what is the net tangible assets, etc. If they have converted, first of all, they need to get it in the system of <coughs> they need to make sure that their accounts are prepared well in accordance with the company's act. And the certificate from the chartered accountant will be required that post that conversion according to the company's act. That is called a restatement of financial estate. Restatement of financial estate means they will prepare that had it been the company, how the balance sheet would have been prepared. If after preparing the kind of a balance sheet format, they satisfy all this condition, then only will be allowed. So many times a confusion arises that how IPO will be considered in case of partnership firm and the division. So this is the answer. Right? Yes, sir. It's now, there are some on the screen, you can see conditions subsequent. What do you mean by conditions subsequent? Any idea? One is having idea. What is the condition subsequent? Condition subsequent means once I have done the IPO, I have to comply with certain requirement post IPO. Means I have come out with the IPO, no issue. But then, Post IP also, I need to comply with certain criteria. Sir, what are those criteria? The criteria are those like one by one. First, they need to make an application to the stock exchange for in principle approval. Immediately get it listed. Because if you do not list it, how the investors will benefit? The benefit is only from listing. So get it listed. Ensure that your shares are in demand form. Ensure that the Promoters are holding 100% because, see, this is a very important point. In fact, it can help in the company law, due diligence, every paper. In fact, it will help you a lot in the like other related topics of your executive curriculum. That, can promoters have shares in physical form in the listed company? No. Nowadays, the promoters are supposed to hold 100% demand shares in the demand form they can't have physical shares so understood that sir and all the shares should be fully better so these are the conditions subsequent that means you are going for ipo with some condition when you have come out with the ipo you will also follow the some condition right then in the ipo there are a lot of intermediaries are covered by, by coming out with the IPO, you need to come out with the various, you need to appoint various intermediaries. By right? intermediaries in the sense, why I should appoint intermediaries? Because the intermediaries appointment will help you in one thing. What is that one thing, sir? The one thing is that if they are there, your work will be segregated. Otherwise, what happens is that the entire onus gets shifted to you. So their appointment is basically done with only intention that work allocation. Like say for example, you can see on the screen registrar is very much required. Why? Because to keep a register of issue, how many shares to be allotted, to whom it should be allotted, and they will coordinate with the bank from time to time. Everything is required by them called a registrar. They will monitor and they will keep a tab on the activity of the company. Then merchant banker. Of course, merchant banker is required because whenever you are going for IPO, you will make a public announcement. So that will be done or taken care part of the merchant banker. 
keep writing that for merchant banker public announcement keep writing like this lead manager the lead manager job is that they will basically look into the entire issue what they will do they will coordinate with the various qibs that who all are going to invest they will request other people also like say for example many mutual funds are there they will keep them requesting or they will keep sharing the information about the company that you can do this or the company is having a good prospect so they are kind of you can in short you are not allowed from advertisement the advertisement is barred but then they will be allowed or they will be supposed they will be acting as a brand manager for you then there is a credit rating at we all know it's a mandatory please note that credit rating of any for ipo is mandatory is yes, we all know because in the market there have been many instances where without giving true picture because see management when i will be issuing public announcement it's in my hand because my merchant banker will be publishing it so what will be the information i am providing who is going to cross check merchant banker will also apply certain level but not go in detail credit trading agency they go all the details they go into your background they go into your history they go into your financials they go in every corner and then they give you the rating that whether you are a plus plus whether you are a double a plus whether you are there are different ratings has a different connotation and meaning so they keep giving you the rating. that is the job of credit trading agency so you have to obtain the credit rating that is mandatory when you are coming out with the right and the last but not the least at the end of the screen you can see monitoring agency see, if your issue size is more than 100 crore that report was it nothing yes if it is more than 100 crore the law says you need to appoint monitoring agency why cause to take from the very beginning because see in the ipo when i go to the public and ask for the fund then i do ask them that this is my project and i will invest in this project and i'll make money so whatever the disclosure i have given for the investment or utilization of fund i should utilize for that do not be like that 100 crore le liya rakhe may happen na isn't it yes or no it may happen because say for example a person has taken by saying ki chalo 100 crore ka ipo le aate hain right 101 ka le aate hain exceed ho gaya 100 crore ka and once they come out with the 100 1 crore ipo what they will do after receiving the money they are keeping into a their separate bank account and saying ki are ye to apna money can they do so no because if it is more than 100 monitoring it is so sir government is not worried about the small ips the small ipo generally people do not they always come in the bigger side and that's why in all of the most cases you will find monitoring agencies there so monitoring agency credit rating right if saying at least yes or no so that it is i will have a feeling that you people are understanding or at least i will have a feeling that your people are virtually with me yeah i keep saying because at times you people keep so silent that i feel like that i am the alone one yeah now next comes to the process how the process of this computer goes about please start with your filing draft of a document now before the offer document before the offer document i would like to say that in your mat in the page number particularly i will say 110 i will go to that mat 110 but then they have defined three things the first is the draft offer second is the offer document and third is the red herring prospect sir what does the three things meaning when i will go to the page 110 i will not explain i am explaining it wrong there we will do only one draft offer means not finalized and draft offer document is filed, filed with the cb 30 days prior for its coming means when you are planning to launch your scheme you will file 30 days in advance so that if cb has any observation then the cb will come out with that objection and cb will let you know So that is called draft offer document. So, sir, then what is offer document? Offer document is the final version. 
and in fact in the offer for sale when you know not with that letter of offer in the offer for sale we generally use a word letter of offer these are all called offer document please do not confuse between the offer document and the letter of offer because at times people do say lof is different offer document is happening no both are same right and the red heading prospectus is the one which is filed right it immediately which is filed only in case of book building processes or where the price is not known say for example today i am going for the filing of document now i am not fixing the price at what will be the price of ipo because i am leaving it to the judge through book building process or maybe i am going for further public offer fpo you know ipo is a initial public offer and fpo is word used for the further public offer that means again going to the public for the shares so when i am going again fpo i give the option to decide the price maybe at a later stage that based on the market price we will decide the uh, allotment price so then in that case of fpo there will be no price indicative in the offer document hence it is called red herring prospect rhp so now it's clear between three draft document uh, initial document means it is in draft stage file 30 days back offer document is a final document and red herring prospect so what i'll do i'll file that draft offer document with the cb now cb you know that once you file with the cb cb hosts it, it on the website for 21 days for the public comment let the public give a comment on it and how the people will come to know whether it's hosted on the cb website or not because see we all know we belongs to this profession and that's why we know the interesting area of the cb but how as a layman shareholder if i am a common shareholder how i will get to know that whether cb has hosted it or not i will make public public announcement saying that the lof etc that means draft letter of offer or draft document offer has been filed with the cb and which is available on the website right so in that case if they have any observation if they feel like any of the like investor or any of the mutual funds or any of the qib category then they will suggest their views to the cb then i am making a public announcement now after the public announcement as per the indicative dates etc in the draft offer i will finalize the final offer document and then once i file with the cb i'll come out with the opening of offer offer to be kept open for 3 to 10 working days people do keep it minimum because every ipo nowadays gets so over subscribed that they do keep open it for 3 to 5 working days right so this is the process is it clear now i am sure that you all have taken this short now once i have issued the ipos do i need to achieve certain things or do i have to achieve certain minimum things in that yes so sir what is that minimum thing that minimum thing see once i issue the ipo at least i said i should get some good response a good response in the mean you what do you want to say good response sir so, what we say basically that uh, the good response when you say 90% subscriptions should come to you 90% means say for example if i issues a 100 crore ipo out of 100 90% should have come through it means 90 crore should have been booted through successfully otherwise if people are not showing interest it's of no use then that means people are not demanding your ipo why should i allow you to go for ipo then once you make announcement make sure that it is subscribed and that is why it is not that everyone can come for the ipo more so the 25 percent category if you see the second para it says that 25 percent of public holding we all know under the icdr and the this scra securities contract regulation act we have studied one thing particularly that minimum public share holding should be how much it should be 25% so public category should come 25% out of that if that is not satisfied 
can't allot shares that means your ipo is failed and that is why when ipo comes out you know people keep preparing for the ipo so well that yes it should not fail and that is why lead managers are appointed that is why bankers trustees and everyone to the ipos are appointed so that ipo should be successful it's a marathon exercise so understood that 90% i need to right yes or no is it clear and clear to you all of you i guess chalo okay now next comes in the same condition there is one more thing even if 90% comes you may be the smart enough you will ask your one of your friend that why not as a public you subscribe 25% and the rest i will ask some bank for mutual fund i have a non contact the bank for mutual fund they will subscribe the cb also is very particular cb says that if you are coming out with a public issue and if the lot is less than 1000 you can't go ahead with the lot so see both the condition please do write it please do write it when i am repeating it again and again for you that means it is very much essential point you people all miss both the condition thousand number and minimum 90% so that means number also you should reach and percentage you should also reach so now question to for you people like say for example i have achieved 90% i have achieved 90% but my numbers are 68 is it successful offer is it successful offer very good sujata you answered it too rightly that it's no not successful yes yes good vitesh atul everyone good it's not a successful offer reason being both the conditions need to be satisfied now before moving to the next slide for the lock in period one people people do have a question which is not there on the slide but you need to write so something i am just bringing for you to sir can ipo be issued in calls like say for example we do not ask the entire money at this moment and we issue the make an issue on a call can we do that yes we can do like we all know on the share holding there is a call right yes or no on share holding there is a call like first call second call we see you need to write here that it can be done on call but all call should be made within a period of one year means whatever the call you want to fix say for example today you want to take this second call of this rupees third call of this rupees whatever the call you have fixed all calls should be realized within a period of one year and first call should be for minimum this first initial subscription should be minimum 25% minimum 25% means out of the price whatsoever you have fixed minimum 25% should come up front minimum 25 right minimum 25% should come up front today only and the rest the balancing one as i told you can come gradually but a period of one so yes answer if it can be made in call it can be correct now going to the lock in the lock in under the ipo is very well depicted in your screen ipo or fpo both are mentioned under this ipo there has to be a minimum promoter's contribution and minimum promoter contribution will be 20% i will tell you that is there in the study mark so that 20% should be there right minimum promoter's contribution so minimum promoters contribution whatsoever 20% they will bring it will be under lock in for a period of 3 years 3 years why because promoters should not say for example i am a promoter what i have done i have got the shares and tomorrow when the share price are high i immediately sold out my entire share made money and then vanished then investors are searching me where is the promoter where is the promoter this situation shouldn't happen 
That's why they keep saying that the promoter's minimum contribution should be locked in for a period of three years. Promoter's excess contribution, what they have contributed in excess, right? If, for example, this is a minimum contribution, they are required 20%. But the law doesn't stop them to contribute more than 20%. So, whatever excess they are giving apart from 20, that will be under lock-in for period of one year because it is excess. But the minimum should be under lock-in for three years. And for all investors, as on the rate of IPO, when they come out, it will be for a period of one year. Because say, for example, today we all are like 10 of people are there in the company and we decided to come out with the IPO. Of course, it should not be like that. Today we are there in the IPO and we are thinking that, okay, we all should be there and we all should like immediately after IPO should shell out our shares. No. Even if we are not the promoter, we can't. For us, means those who were like uh, holding on the date when the scheme was launched, the lock-in period will be one year. Right? So, is this system clear? The lock-in period is clear to all of you. Three years, one year's excess, one year's for every other one. And in case of FPO, right? FPO, the excess promoter contribution whatsoever they will give, that will be under the lock-in for a period of one year. Exactly same. So now it's clear to all of you that lock-in period. Yes, give me the indication so that now we were back to our study mat. Yeah, it is clear. Now before moving to the next, on this page only, I will just say write one more thing. That whatever the minimum contribution the promoters are bringing, they need to bring a front at least one day's advance of the opening of offer. Ah, sir, so much strict regulation for the promoters. Yes, it is so much. Sir, it's really very difficult for promoters. Not difficult. Rather, SEBI is caring for you people. SEBI is caring for the investors. SEBI is caring the uh, stakeholders' interest. So that is why they have mandated that the promoter should bring the money one day in advance of the investment. It should be brought in one day in advance. And they bring in the money one day in advance. Right? Sir, but say for example, if they are required to like bring in a lot of amount, say IPO is very big of 1,000, 2,000 crore, and where they need to bring 400 crore, etc. Right? Because if it is of 2,000 crore, what is the minimum contribution? 20%? If the total issue size is 2000 crore, what is the minimum promoter's contribution? 20%. So, if it is 20%, it will go to 400 crore. Right? Isn't it? It will go to 400 crore. The moment it is 400 crore, sir, it is too much. See, in those cases, in fact, SEBI also says that upfront at least bring 100 crore and the later part the next time. Since, you know, Next phase. If it is more than 100 crore, then 100 crore at least upfront. Right? Upfront means one day in advance. Because at least the CB should know that promoters have money, promoters have this capacity to, like escrow account. Why escrow account is open? To check whether the investors or whether the acquirer who is making offer, whether he is having a solvency or not. Right? Otherwise, there is no like benefit of coming out with those uh, like swell. Okay, so this is what the summary of the IPO. I hope it is clear from this screen itself. Now I will immediately go to the study map. In case, please do you have any questions, please keep raising because I would love to answer your query. And I keep waiting, trust me, I keep waiting for the day that if any people will throw a number of queries for me to answer. But the good thing is that you people take care of me. People hardly say, Ki, sir, hai na, aapke kya kari karenge, sir, you answer everything. Right, isn't it? On a lighter note, I am just saying. And there is no bar you can keep interacting with the chat box. Now, coming to the page number 400, uh, sorry, uh, as I told you, 110. If you come to this chapter, draft of our documents we have done. 
offer documents we have done and see offer document as i said in fact the letter of offer in case of right issue or offer for sale they all are considered as a offer document red herring is the one which doesn't uh, doesn't have the details relating to the price. So, sir, we have done this. Yes, actually. Then thereafter, I said about the IPO. Then I said about the FPO, right? Applicability. The ICDR regulation applies on every issue. Be it IPO, be it FPO, be it right issue. All issues are concerned. Whatever the issue you remember, just write IPO, FPO, referential issue. QIP, right issue, everything is covered under this ICDR. In fact, ICDR is the mother regulation for all issues. Now, coming to the eligibility requirement for IPO. The eligibility requirement for complied for IPO, we have already done. What is exactly the shortcut we remembered? It? BO double. Right? You have stopped responding. See, there is a willful defaulter. Visiting a funder, promoter should not be barred. We have all covered those periods. Correct. Now come to the page number 112. See eligibility requirement. Again, this portion we have done. The net tangible assets of P crore, right? Net worth of 1 crore, average profit of 15 crore. We have covered. And in fact, I told you, if they do not satisfy this condition, then what will be the remedy? Say, for example, I'm not satisfying any of this condition. Can I still come out with the IPO? If yes, then what is the remedy? I will come out with the book building process, where 75% will be reserved for the babies. Right? So that is the remedy available to me in the IPO. Right? Then I told you about page number. Come to the page number 115. If I am a partnership firm or a division, like say, for example, if I have a partnership firm, then it will be restated balance sheet. Then it will be through restated financial statement. And similarly, if it is a division, then it will also be through the restated financial statement. So restated financial statement will help you to determine that how it is tracked through the firms and division, how they will present themselves, whether they are in a position to make IP or not, because there are many circumstances. See, if today I'm telling you, uh, like had it been the flip card, and all they are under the like partnership say for example amongst the Bansal brothers and tomorrow they convert into a company and want to come out with the IPO now do you want to say that they can't come out with the IPO all can consider right there is a possibility of coming out with the IPO for the farms as well as the division but then provided they also need to satisfy certain conditions now I'll tell you to come page number 170 where there is an eligibility criteria for the FPO. Now, under the FPO, there is nothing new. Since I have taken you through the IPO so easily, now FPO you will find so easy. See, all these conditions are same. Barred willful defaulter, fugitive offender, all are same. So for FPO also, the conditions are same. Further eligibility criteria for the FPO is not those three because see, now they are not going to check your profit and all. Now they will see only one criteria out of those that if you have changed the name, 50% should come from that. Because see, try to understand, sir, why not net tangible assets? Why not profit? And why not this net network they are checking? See, when you are initially going to the market, they check your credibility. Now, since you are coming out with the FPO, you are already there in the market. You are already having your own repo. So why should I check it? Because since you are already built up your image, so there is no requirement to check your credibility or your check your credential, right? 
Yes, sir. Now we understood. So there is no requirement. Yes. Come to the page 118. 118 talks about appointment of intermediate. You will appoint lead manager, you will appoint bankers, you will appoint compliance officer, which I already told you. Right? So basically, now what we are doing is understanding the flow. See, flow, flow becomes so easy for us. Now, filing of offer document with the CB. This is there in the page number 119, which I was telling you that whenever you are finalizing your offer document, first you will file with the CB. You are filing with the draft document with the CB. How many advanced days you are filing? 30 days. What CB will do? CB will look into it. And SEBI will give the observation within 70 days. SEBI will also keep on the website for public comment for 21 days. Right? Because this point again we have discussed. So there is nothing like that. Uh, like you will require, yes, sir, how we will, blah, blah, what is the flow? You have understood. Like in the next page, it is given in the detail. You will file three copies of the draft offer document with the SEBI, right? three copies along with the due diligence certificate and this due diligence certificate is given by the merchant banker to so try to understand the role of merchant banker in the ipo or why they will give the due diligence certificate the merchant banker will give will say that no the company is running properly so far the promoters i have given a declaration i have seen all the declaration that they are not debarred from the market they are acting in a good manner Promoters are not willful defaulter. I have checked the list also because RBI comes out with the list. So they will verify from the list as well. They will also further certify that based on the information, they are not fugitive offender. They will also give the company's credential information. So all this due diligence certificate that everything is okay will be given by the merchant bank. So that when the CB will go through the letter of offer or the draft document, CB will think of it here, whether to give the clearance to the company or not right and it will be available in the public domain for 21 days see what i was telling you it's all here so now you can trust me completely that i was not saying something unique or new to you because otherwise you people must be wondering Are sir, kuch hai, to nahi bol na. right now on the page number 121 you will find ipo grid and the opening the opening shall be for third para that it should be <coughs> three working days and it will the window period sorry i'll go back to the page the window period should be eight to ten working days right sir so once the cb gives the clearance is there any time period to open the issue yes once the cb gives the clearance then you have a time period to open the issue within 12 months I mean, say for example, SEBI has gone through your document and CB after going through documents, cleared it and said, okay, now you can open your offer. So in that case, within 12 months, you can come with the offer. Right? Underwriter, this page 121 will come at the later stage. Now, minimum subscription 122. I will rather suggest write PCH or Chuke. Why? Because we have just done that it should reach 90%. Right? And the period of subscription, see the other way they are saying the window will be open for 3 to 10. Don't you think we have done this? Monitoring agency, in case it is 100 crore or more, don't you think we have done it already? Yes, sir, we have already done. Now, next page, you will find that application and minimum application value. That what should be the minimum application value? Let's see. Depends again. The company has to keep some reservation for the retail investors and the company has to allot something to the UIVs mandatorily in every your uh, this IPO. Now, the IPO also Say, for example, if I want to apply for one share, can I make application? No. IPO should have some minimum size. Otherwise, see, if one one share I allow, so if my issue size is 2,000 crore, now imagine for 2,000 crore, how many people will subscribe? Just imagine. 
you may get hundreds of crores and hundreds of applications. So here they have fixed that the range should be 10,000 to 15,000. It's a rupees. Say for example, one share is of 1,000 rupees. One share is of rupees 1,000. I will need only 10 to 15 shares, right? If my one share value is 1,000 rupees, I hope you all are getting it. If my one share value is 1,000 rupees, so how many minimum shares one should apply? 10 or 15, right? 10 to 15. And if my shares value is 20 rupees, then maybe it will range 20. That means if it is at 20, then at least minimum 500 shares should be there. Right, so range of application should be between 10,000 to 15,000. Make sure that at least a reasonable amount is achieved. Right. Similarly, if you go to the next page, you will find that minimum manner of call is given and the minimum subscription, minimum sum payable at the time of issue is given. As I told you that minimum 25% you should collect at the very beginning. Now 25% is given. Manner of call, I said there can be money in the calls, but all the calls should be made within period of 12 months. Right? Otherwise, of course, we all know for future procedure. Just below that, you will find the thousand numbers, which I was telling you that if it is below thousand, it will not be allotted at all. So far, it is clear yes or no. If you do not say yes, I will not go to the next. Because the next is on that, I am straight away moving to the pricing and all and minimum promoters contribute. Yes. So come to page number 128. 128, sorry. 128. See, there are certain like face value and the pricing norms. The face value you have to, of course, maintain in the your offer document or the data offer document. Pricing. See, you may charge differential pricing. Like we all know, the retail individual investors may be given some advantage, but then the discount should not be more than 10%. Means there is upper cap and the lower cap. Right, so you give the investor, retail investors. Why you are giving the retail individual investors the benefit, sir? Because they are the retail investors, sir. They are like not coming from the large amount. They are not coming from the large chunk. So they need to be given certain benefit to have the advantage of the pricing. So see, QIB and the fund managers, they all are from the top. They all can invest, even if you say 110 rupees or 120 rupees, they can. But the retail investors always prefer some discount. So if the pricing is 100 rupees, you can give a maximum 10 rupees discount. So that means the price for them can be fixed 90, not less than 90. Now tell me if the price is 120, what will be the discount I can offer and what can be the price, minimum price for retail investors? That is the question for you people. Answer this and then we will go to the next topic. If the price is 120, so what will be the price to the retail investors? Yeah, Sujata, you are really answering well. What about the others? If the price is 120, what will be the price coming out? See, 120 minus 12, that is coming 108. Right, Vita is very good. 108 will be the price which I can give to the retail investors. Now, at the extreme end, you can see the promoter's contribution. I said that the promoter should bring money, so that minimum contribution, so that post-issue capital, please do note, post-issue capital, that means, see, minimum contribution should be 20%, as I was telling you uh, 15 minutes back also. But then 15, uh, this 20% is of post-issue. Post-issue means, 
say for example after the ipo your total capital size is maybe around 300 or crore out of 300 crore 20 percent should come from the promoters post issue capital sir they will amount they will subscribe too much yes they will that is the minimum contribution from the promoters 20 percent and in case of fpo also they will subscribe to the minimum extent of 20 percent of post sir you told us one thing more that the promoters money to be brought in first yes you all can see the promoters money to be brought in first at least one day in advance right now second para as i was telling you that if third para rather that if they are supposed to bring more than 100 crore then they will bring the first 100 crore and then as and when the offer often means offer period opens they will keep bringing in that amount so 100 crore should come up front if it is more than 100 crore right yes sir understood so that is what the minimum promoter's contribution on the page number which is given on the page number under at the of your mat now i will tell you to go to the next 132 again you will see sir ye to ho chuka see most of the things with the slide we have covered fpo fpo is a further public requirement for the public offer right minimum contribution only just we need to that in certain case minimum promoter's contribution will not apply why because in case of fpo or ipo it is both even ipo also like say for example if i do not have any promoter all the professionally people are coming out with the ipo and it's like they are not declaring themselves as a promoter so that means no minimum contribution so that will not come even in case of fpo or i where they are not having any identifiable promoter that means nobody is saying that i am the promoter so if nobody is saying how can you come out with the requirement of having offer right now come to the page number 133 lock in requirement again we have discussed this See, it is to be locked in for a period of three years right <clears throat> promoters access should be locked in for a period of one year right so everything is mentioned that what exactly the locking period what we have discussed is everything mentioned here in the page number 133 and 130 now go down and you will understand that what about the securities held by the promoter other than person i told you for them also there will be a period of one year because they are holding in case of other than the ex means promoters these are the locking now <clears throat> what will happen sir is this locking also applicable when you are talking about in the morning green shoe option that some shares will be given to the stabilizing agent so they will also be required to follow this lock-in period etc see if in condition say for example i am 15000 shares which i was given the example if they have been given by the promoters during the ipo that okay you take from here this minimum 15000 share which are required to stabilize the market they are giving it to the lender right so then for them also the lock-in will start otherwise there will be no lock-in please do write otherwise there will be low lock-in only if it is held by the promoters and lent to the stabilizing agent then the lock-in will start right uh, just a minute you have one question see there is a question like yes of course i will answer but first question pertains to from isha that what if promoters made default in fpo so then to in fpo they can't go na? see isha we discuss certain prerequisite that promoter should not be willful defaulter promoter should not be fugitive offender promoter should not be barred so this condition remains for both ipo and fpo if they have done this you can't come out with the ipo and fpo and 
what I was saying that minimum promoter contribution will not be required because there is no promoter, no identifiable promoter. In case in the IP or IPO, whatever, if you are not able to identify the promoter, question of minimum promoter contribution doesn't arise. So that is why I wanted to see. I hope Visha is clear to you. Then I'll move to the next query. Or in case I'm not even able to answer it, you can unmute your speaker and you can ask the query. Next question has come from the like another like Vitesh. He is saying, did lock-in period is applicable on the general retail investor? No. See, when you next question is from Vitesh. So he's saying, did lock-in period is applicable on the general return investor? That means, I will just clarify one more position, my here clear. That, see, I was telling you, the lock-in is only for the promoter and those who were holding shares as on the date of IPO launch. But say, for example, I'm the one who is subscribing to IPO under the new issue. Then there is no question of lock-in. Only those who were holding the IPO, sorry, who were holding the shares as on the date of launch of IPO will be under the lock-in. I hope it's clear now. Okay, thank you. Trying my best to answer. Next comes, what is the minimum offer to the public you will give? What is the minimum offer on the page number 135 it is given? That it has to be maintained comes of rule 19 to be and if we recollect when we have done the SCRA chapter the first chapter of the securities law I told you that 25 percent is the minimum in some cases it can be 10 percent but in 10 cases 10 percent case also I told you specifically that they will increase it up to 25 percent right so minimum 25 percent of the public shareholding you have to maintain right now the question comes, Kisar, say for example, if a company is coming out, say X is a company which is coming out with the IPO, don't you think they should reserve some shares for the employee? Yes, they could. And that is why in most of the IPO you will see there is a para written that the in IPO some share have been reserved for the employees as well. But the extent of reservation should not extend number three, five percent of the cap of the post issue because otherwise so you will keep reserved the entire IP for employees. No, only 5% is the cap which you can reserve for the employee, etc. And then employee cannot ap apply for more than 2 lakh rupees application. Means one employee say for example, I'm a director, I'm a executive director, I'm having a lot of crores and crores. So I can't make application for crore. Right? I have to limit my application within 2 lakh rupees. And overall, limit is 5 percent right <clears throat> so clear this ipo and fpo so far clear any doubt because icdr is very dicey so we need to be very 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 particular about everything so you need to consent then we will move to the next that yes to all of you it's clear right okay very good very good now once we understood the fpo and ipo mechanism I will take you to the fast track. That there is a concept of fast track FP also. And in the exam, many times a question has come that the eligibility criteria of fast track FPO. What do you mean by the fast track? Fast track C in the FPO and IPO. Can you recollect that we need to file the draft of a document with SEBI? Yes or no? We need to file a draft of a document with the SEBI. But in the FPO, you may go away without filing the offer document with the CB. Because the CB wants, you should go immediately. See the first line itself start on page 136. Actual company may not file the draft of a document and the observation from the CB. They straight away can go for FPO, making public issue. So let's see your 30 days window. Because see, draft of a document, first you will prepare. Then you will file with CB. CB will give comment within 30 days. Then you will go think of finalizing the offer. So it may take at least 45 to 60 days, right? Practically. 
So this 45 to 60 days, almost like two months will be saved for you, but you need to satisfy certain condition. Otherwise you will not fall under the path. Sir, what are those conditions? See, first, your share should be listed for three years. Promoter should share be completely demand and market cap of public in case where you are considering the FPO only for larger at the public level, then it should be 1000 crore. And where you are considering rights issue means only giving to the existing shareholder. See, FPO again means further public offer. When you are going to the public is okay. Or maybe you can go and give, ask your only existing shareholder to subscribe for it. If it is right issue, then the market cap should be 250 crore. So the average market cap will be 1000 or 2000. Right? The average market cap, market cap is what? Market cap is the number of shares of your company multiplied by the market price of your shares. Because see, if you are having a 2 crore shares and then the price is rupees 50, 2 crore and price is 50. So your market cap is 100 crore because 2 into 50 is that making a 100 crore, right? One question has come that FPO has no need to file the draft document. See, FPO again will file. FPO and IPO both need to file the offer document. Only the fast track FPO will not file. Clear? I guess it's clear to you. So now, again, coming back to my like fast track IPO eligibility idea. Three years listed. Your demand shares completely of promoters. Market cap your of at least thousand crore, and in case of right issue, two fifty crore. Then your annualized trading turnover and it is calculated on the basis of trading volume on the stock market. So that should also be at least 2%. If you have a question, at least answer to it. Yes, clear to you. So analyze trading turnover should be two percent and then company should be in compliance in the last three years with the listing agreement or sebi lodr because now see lodr has come so you will basically look into the lodr right i think ridhika your question answer i answered it well because you didn't answer so i thought let me ask by the name only you had a question on the fpo so i guess now the answer is clear that even in the FPO, you will file the draft of a document. Only for the fast track FPO, you will not file. Okay. So the company compliance is there and the company should have resolved on the investors grievances and no so cause should be pending against the company or have been initiated by the CB against the company. So see, there are many conditions out of which we will just remember six, seven points so that we will at least be able to present in the answer very well, means in the exam very well. PS listed, compliance with the stock uh, listing agreement and the LODR, DMAT completely promoter shares, annualized trading turnover of 2%, market cap, resolved all the grievances, 95% of grievances of investors, and then no so cause notice against the company. Right, so if as far as all this condition, then you can go for the fast track F. That means allowing you to come with the FPO without filing the offer, etc. Right. So so far, any questions or any doubt you people are having, like anything you want to know from the IPO, FPO, fast track FPO related, please do feel free because otherwise I'll take you through the small small issues. No question, then okay. Let's make a move to the page number 140. 140 is all about right issue. The right issue again, the, your curriculum also doesn't define that. Well, it's it's a very clear. Let's say if you are in the right issue, you have to decide. See, FPO and right issue again is a different. How it is different? FPO, you are going to public. 
right issue you are giving only to your existing shareholders. So in the right issue also, you need to file the draft of a document. But in the right issue, threat threshold is very low. In right issue, if you look at the third varieties, an issuer having a value of rupees 10 crore or more at the time of filing of the letter of offer. Right. And also at the time of the final, as the case may be. Means if you are having a lesser than 10 crore, then you don't need to satisfy the condition chapter 3 ICDR. ICDR chapter 3, this is again I'm saying, like say for example, appointing intermediaries, right? Registrar, merchant bankers, all those obligations, plus minimum subscription 90%, thousand allottees, right? All these are covered. Promoter's contribution, all these are covered under the right means chapter 3. So now the question is that if your issue size is 10 crore or more, then you have to set mandatorily comply with all those conditions like minimum promoter's contribution should be come to your like 20%. They should subscribe to the extent of total subscription. 90% should be achieved. 25% should be public, right? All these conditions to be achieved even during the right issue. But if size is 10 crore or more. Now in the exam, I may give a question that XYZ, a listed company has come out with the right issue of 8 crore. The company has not received the promoter's contribution, minimum promoter contribution. As a company secretary, you please advise. Now, what you people do out of your excitement, you advise, no, no, minimum promoter contribution is 90%. So, if they have failed, no option. The company can't be survived. But then my answer will be that read out clearly. Say is 10 crore or more. So, if it is lesser than 10 crore, I am not required to follow the CB regulation chapter 3. I may or may not have service minimum contribution. I may or may not have 90% achievement. Right? Yes or no? Next, we move to the page number 141, which is PREF issue. Under the PREF issue, preferential issue, many times this has been asked and preferential issue, please do it. Under the preferential issue, always I suggest better to do this the regulation. The second para which you can see the regulation 159, certain ineligibility means if you are not allowed in certain conditions, you may not be allowed to trade at all, right? That is the D-bar under the preferential issue. Sir, what we will do under the presenter, under the presenter issue, it is basically allotted to a group of person. The group of person means it is allotted basically to identified promoters group or the mutual fund house. The mutual fund house means mutual fund house means the big investors those who put the money and say, for example, as a promoter. I want immediate infusion of fund of money. Like my company is there, but I am a promoter. I want at least 50 crore immediately. What I thought, if I go to the FPO or IPO, it will take time. Right? And in fact, people will subscribe or not, it's a question. So I will identify a select group of person. Maybe I will speak to them. I will say, okay, if you are interested, you can subscribe to my chairs. But yes, of course. Once I receive their consent, it has to be approved by the shareholders. So, right, preferential issue to be approved by the shareholders by passing a special resolution. Now, question comes in eligibility. As I said, read eligibility. It will not be given to any share person who has sold the share in the last six months because. If the person has sold the shares in the last six months, why are you giving the shares to the person now only? So if the person has already sold, why are you giving right now? That has to be very much truly examined that yes, if the person has sold in the last six months, that person should not be allotted at all. The new shares under the preferential issue. Correct? Yes, sir. That's very much clear. Should not be. The 
person who has for, failed to subscribe in the last one year. Say, for example, I have just now asked, say, XYZ is mutual fund corporation. I have asked them to subscribe to my shares. They have, at the time of allotment, they didn't give me the money. Now, issue failed. After two months, they are saying, no, no, now we can we have money, we will subscribe to your share. So you can't because one year you are barred. So those who have sold the shares in the last six months, those who have failed to subscribe in the last one year, and last but not the least, if you are issuing it to the promoter or director, or if your promoters or directors are fugitive economic offender, in fact, willful defaulter is also covered here. Please do write that under the regulation now, willful defaulter is also covered. If they are the fugitive economic offender or willful defender, they will not. So that conditions, see two conditions common we have got for the staff issue. Rather new conditions are that, that they should not have sold shares in the last six months. And second, that the person who is getting not have failed in the last one year to exercise shares of that company. Right? I will request you, since profile is done, you I because QIP is a very much related one. You can see on the page 142. See, QIP means qualified institutions placement means when you are issuing shares to a qualified institutional buyers, means QIP. See, why again at times you know that the company do encourage. See, what is the difference between PREF? PREF is you are giving to a select. QIP means I will open it for all the mutual fund users. I will keep it open for everyone. I will ask everyone to subscribe it, like all the mutual fund. Retail investors will not participate. See, in the investors, say, for example, big funds houses are coming, like SDFC, Jupiter, BlackRock, this, uh, your Goldman Sachs, they all are coming. So, if I, out of them, I can give the PREF issue to one or two, but when I want, he let them pick. Let them all tender their request that they want to subscribe to shares. And then I go ahead for the QIP. In that case, I will come out with the QIP, Qualified Institutional placement. Here I will need approval from the shareholders as well. The shareholders have to pass by the special resolution. Right? Once I receive the shareholders approval, how the process goes about, I will make my window open. Right? The window, once it open, they will be tendering or they will be bidding. You can say they will be placing the shares. I will fix a price. And in fact, in the QIP, always the company fix the price at a premium. And people like mutual fund house and financial institution, they do subscribe at premium. Sir, but my now question in the last QIP is this. Why they will subscribe at a premium? Because they see prospects in your company. They see future of your company. They see that, yes, if you are at 100 today, you will go 140 in the future. For all these reasons, they do such. Right? So this is the difference between, thing the difference between the preferential issue and the QIP. Right? Now, I will ask you to go to the page number 144, IDR. 144. Hundred forty four, which talks about the IDR. IDR, what exactly it is, you all know. IDR is basically issued by a foreign company, right? When they will borrow some money from India, or maybe they will ask the investors in India to invest in those companies. So, Indian people or Indian investors, I will have a caution in my mind, because it is a foreign company. I may not or may get some benefit. So, IDR are issued. What they do for the issuance of IDR? First, TB has mandated that in their home country, they should be listed for home country. That means, say, for example, UK based companies issuing, so they should have a track record of UK listing at least for three years. So, if it is listed in UK for three years, it can consider of coming out with the idea. But then they should not be prohibited by any regulatory means, in fact, from CV here and as well as in UK also. And then they should have a track record of compliance in their home country. And sir, how they will examine? See, SEBI has all the power. They will write to the UK stock exchange and they will ask them, like US 
based company they can write to the us based nasdaq etc uk based they can ask the luxembourg and all they will just like write a letter to please confirm if this company is in compliance or not and they will give the detailed report and lastly that fugitive economic offender and in fact now willful defaulter is also covered that they should not cover under those conditions right so for the idr issuance this conditions to be satisfied and minimum offer size please do write minimum offer size for the idr so to be 50 crore 50 50 Sir, how is the practical flow of idea? See, under the practical flow of idea, just for your knowledge, I am giving because we are discussing today. So even theoretical will not help you too much. Conditions you will remember, but then practically you should know how the flows of uh, how the flow of this idea goes about. Under the idea, what basically the foreign company will do? Foreign company will hire an Indian custodian, and they will give their shares to the Indian custodian bank. they will say now against those shares you please issue receipt in the market of my company and ask the investors to put the money into the deposit receipt investors will put the money into the receipt once the investors feel like that okay no longer i want to continue with this receipt or if the share price is too high why not let me sell so the investors will approach the custodian that give me the shares now and the custodian will give the shares on the company right so this is the mechanism which happens through the custodian the gdr adr see gdr adr is not covering here because the reason gdr adr is for indian company in the foreign to be issued so gdr adr is regulated by their norms where you will be issuing since idr foreign company is issuing here so you are regulating them as per your requirement right Yes, sir. So, IDR we have studied, right issue we have studied, preferential issue we have covered. Now, the last topic of this chapter, I will take you, request you to one forty-six. Innovative growth platform. It is a new nowadays. You will find it in the news that innovators growth platform. What exactly it is? It is a platform basically offered to a selected group. Say, for example, straight equity we have studied. it was only for know how or your intellectual property right similarly that innovative growth platforms or innovators growth platform is a platform which has been offered for use of technology like only those company which are aggressively in the technology maybe biotechnology nanotechnology or artificial intelligence data intelligence uh, data analytics if companies are involved in this kind of a thing they can come on the innovators growth platform right and they should ensure that the minimum condition for coming on this platform is that 25% of their capital for a period of 2 years prior to coming this will be held by qib means those high profile financial institutions or maybe by family trust but family trust like big trust because they are having a net worth of 500 crore or maybe by accredited investors Now question comes: Who all are accredited investors? See, this is the minimum criteria. Now I tell you to the accredited investors. See, if you if you come to the page one forty seven, it's very clearly saying that there are a lot of conditions. See. like uh, these are the condition which you should be uh, fulfilled to be required to be as a investors now coming uh, to the state away accredited investors the accredited investors are the one who have got the accreditations like accreditations for what they have to have hold of 10% 10% right and as an individual capacity they should not hold more than 5% See, that is what I am saying in the individual capacity, and as an accredited, they will be holding up to the extent of ten percent, and they will be considered as accredited if they are having a gross total income of five crore, uh, sorry, fifty lakh, and then there are net worth is of five. So that means just see, 
it's mm -hmm. all talking about innovative growth platforms is all open for big wheeze technologies company. Yes, that is what it is talking about nanotechnology, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, data analytics. Why for the reason? Because they're saying 25% for the last two years should be held by them. Either QIB, family trust, QIB in any case are the big shots. Family trust, not family trust. They're saying family trust having net worth of 500 crore more. That means big family trust or accredited investors. Now, if you go to the accredited investors, you find their minimum income should be 50 lakh and their network should be 5 crore. You can understand the person is having that much of caliber, high profile, the individuals. So those only, if they are holding 25% of the pre issue capital, then only they can come on the innovators. Right? And they are having the privilege to get a listing without making a public offer. They can get it listed on the innovators growth platform. Right? So that is basically all about the innovators growth platform. And it is quite interesting, you know, that nowadays many big risk companies die. Those companies which are basically, we have noticed the artificial intelligence and the biotechnology are the field. The companies are going towards the innovative growth. This in nutshell covers our entire SEBI ICR. And before concluding it, I will request you to go to the underwriters. If anyone can help me with the page number, underwriters. Which I said I will cover at the end. Any one of you can help me with the, where exactly the underwriters? Yes, it is 121. Page number 121. Underwriting. The underwriters role as we are doing today two tasks. One is we are doing ICDR and one we are reading the rule also. So that in the intermediaries regulation, we will write the entire their role and power. The under the underwriting, when underwriting gets triggered, the underwriting will in any case be covered a and book building. As I was telling you that if you do not satisfy those conditions, like you, you have to go for book building. So underwriting is mandatory in book. To write it, underwriting is mandatory in book building. So, sir, is it voluntary in the other process? Yes, it is voluntary in the other process. But if you are considering to appoint the underwriter, then you have to follow the conditions. Right? First, the issue shall be underwritten that yes, they are willing to subscribe. And make sure that whatever the 75% you have committed to QIB, that remains to QIB. The remaining can be underwritten. Underwritten means, means they will be subscribing, right? They will at least be holding. Say for example, if I do not achieve 90%, I will also draw your attention to the point D, next page 120. The lead manager shall not subscribe to the issue except for fulfilling their underwriting of it. means if say for example I have appointed my lead manager only as underwriter. If my lead manager is underwriter, so he will subscribe only to that underwriter. Why we appoint underwriting? In the normal book building process or in the normal process where the underwriting is voluntary. Generally, people apprehend 90% go. 1,000 investors are going to So, 1,000 investors so it's become easy. But 90% achieve, to achieve your issue size, 90% is a challenge. So, what they do? They appoint underwriter. In case no one subscribes, my underwriter will subscribe. But underwriter will not be falling under category. Like, as I was telling you under the book building, 75% you need to give to people. At 75% you will give to QIB. Maybe next 15% or maybe next or even the remaining percent is to achieve that 90% threshold. You can get it done through underwriting. But then 75 will remain to QIB only. Right? Now you understood the role of underwriter. The role of underwriter is to make the issue successful. To make you achieve 90% threshold. What we have covered in the ICDR, today we have got to know ASBA process first, then UPI, UPI is used now for retail investors, 
Then we have done the green shoe option, GSO. Then we have come to the ICDR where IPO we have done some criteria for IPO. Then criteria for FPO. We have also done for IPO and FPO. What are the conditions to be done after IPO and FPO? Like making application to stock exchange, complete demand shares of promoters, uh, open a demand account, right? All these conditions subsequent. That also we have done. We have also done that if partnership firm or division is there, how they will be uh, fulfilling the criteria or IPO. Then what are the minimum conditions like 90% to be achieved? Minimum promoter contribution 20%. Promoter should bring their money upfront. But if it is more than 100 crore, then at least 100 crore prior to day one. And then remaining amount they will give as and when they issue, they are subscribing. Issue will open for 3 to 10 working days. Promoter shares minimum contribution will remain locked in for 3 years. Access will remain for 1 year. Existing investors money will remain locked in for 1 year. Right? Not new one those who are subscribing. Existing one. Minimum application value will be between 10,000 to 15,000. Right? And more so the difference of pricing can be there but 10 percent you can give 10 percent discount to retail investors then we have done fast track fpo that for the fast track certain eligibility like your market cap should be very thousand crore and in case of right issue 250 you should have a track record of compliance three years listed for three years then there is no violation as said no violation or no so-called notice against you 95 percent investor grievance you have addressed Annualized trading turnover should be 2%. This was all about fast track IPO. Then we have done PREF issue. In PREF, I said it is to selected group. And in the PREF issue, you will be like, can't allot the shares to the person who has sold the shares in the last six months. Or you can't give this, uh, subs allot the shares to the person who has failed to subscribe in last one year. So ineligibility, I ask you particularly to check. Then we have done. QIB, QIB we have understood the shareholder resolution we passed, the mechanism we understood. Then finally we done the innovators platform. That how the innovators growth platform is reached. What are the companies that can be listed on the innovators growth platform? And what are the threshold to be complied for this? Right? Now with this we complete the entire curriculum of our CV security store. As requested by all of you, now I open the window for our discussion and question. Please feel free to raise question, be it related to the exam, be it related to this paper. But then yes, do raise question because I keep saying that more questions you ask, more it will help. In the very beginning today, we have discussed already the revised strategy. So that question get answered in any case that how we will revise the curriculum, how we will go about the flow of the curriculum. Right? That in any case gets completed. So now I open the window for let's have some question answer round, open question answer. Wherever you are feeling that what with the flow, how we should write the answer. Let's discuss that. Please, you can start raising your query. I am leaving it to you people. I think I am audible. I have asked the window to be open for any queries and question answer, like relating to any how we should study one day before exam. See, this is I think you were not that point of time. I said it becomes very crucial, and actually we have one day only to prepare for the examination. We have discussed the flow of the paper, like how we should go up, like again with a writer that. The flow will remain subjective like I can't comment on the flow because the flow keeps getting changed right it is like that say for example for you might be some other paper is easier and for me might be some uh, another paper is easier so how we will deal with the situation we should start with the flow for the easiest paper for us and then go to the 
gradually because the, the easiest paper once you complete it very fast at least you will have some confidence that yes i can do the revision of the next paper also otherwise if you start with a difficult one if you get stuck then what comes into the mind oh my god maybe i'll not be able to finish my entire curriculum so i always say start with the easiest topics to complete your revision and the flow today also we have discussed that first complete the cb act scra act depository act because see these are like will be taking hardly half an hour because when you are going for revision because these act are really simple so first complete those act then make a move to the insider trading regulation once you are done with the insider trading regulation then i always suggest come back to the like it's up to you again i am saying the flow once you are done with insider trading regulation go for the mutual fund and the cis because again those mutual fund and cis are very small one once you are done with that then again come back to the delisting delisting post delisting do the esops regulation and then take the takeover and buyback together because takeover and buyback are correlated and then lodr and icdr should be kept for the end and the definition like definition in the definition part go for the definition of your like there are so many things like i am just mentioning the name only for the definition like uh, there are the definitions of the anchor investors angel fund alternative investment fund right private equity so do focus on those definitions as well this will make you to complete your syllabus revision in a smart way rather i can tell you lesser than a day because when we started all those who are watching the session when we started this link and then you started the streaming of this video for the initial 25 minutes maybe we have done the revision of entire whatever we have done in so far in the last previous four sessions and if we are doing it through the video more 25 minutes i am saying even if you are doing in a bit bit detail it might take or it might i will multiply it with say for example 20 times if i have go with the 20 times i got 500 minutes that means roughly around 8 hours so 8 hours is good enough for the revision right so that should be the flow and that should the fundamental we should approach so right the first uh, question by you i think i guess i answered it well the second question has come how to deal with problem questions i couldn't make it out the what is the problems and what is the questions so can you elaborate your questions next question comes like in between i get elaborated next question comes like what is the suggestive way of and what is the pattern of writing in the exam see again you don't need to prepare like a einstein the answer should be strategic one see we all are going in the exam with an intent answer the question in the way it is asked say for example i am asking you relating a certain condition a, let's say particularly i am putting a write a short note on the process of making application to the cb by the stock exchange now we all know we just file the form 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 a with the stock exchange right so form a is filed with the stock exchange for the process of making application to the stock exchange uh, sorry to the cb now cb will uh, after reviewing the application they may ask some informations or they may reject it but in both the cases they will have the opportunity of being so this is the smallest thing now i'm telling you if this question comes for 6 marks how you will apply your mind see for 6 marks at least you need to elaborate now here what you do elaborate that under the cb cb has been empowered because see question is that how they will apply so now i was telling you the first words a normal simple answer that you straight away make application to now i'm giving you the proper answer the first you will write under the cb act 1982 if you remember that's good enough otherwise if you do not remember under the cb act is good enough under the cb act comma the cb has been empowered to grant recognition to this even the cb has the power to withdraw the recognition given to the stock exchange the cb has also been empowered under the act to make suspension of the stock exchanges as and when they feel in the interest of investors now see my one para concluded on the cb try to understand i have concluded one para on the cb authority cb power now i am writing the question that 
in order to make application, a stock exchange will be required to submit a form called Form A. CB on the receipt of such form will make an examination. The CB has following other powers under the Act. One, to seek information. Two, to reject. Then you again write the answer. That if on the examination, CB feels like some more information is required, CB will seek to. But if CB doesn't require any information, then CB will reject it. But opportunity of being will be opportunity of being heard will be given. Now you must have understood the first answer which I given like a normal answer is simple. And this answer, now you tell me obviously which one will get higher marks. From your common point, you know that the letter one, which I said recently, will get higher marks because now I have elaborated the question in the way it is supposed. So try to study the question again and again. You will just say, no, sir, you have given one example. Just throw another example. Let, 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 coming to your view. Okay, for example, I write uh, like a question has come that it compels uh, under the delisting regulation, right? Under voluntary offer, the company has to give exit opportunity. Comment. Now, we all know that under the voluntary offer, exit opportunity depends. If you are from all the stock chains, yes, of course, you need to give exit opportunity. If you are not going from all the stock chains, then no need of exit opportunity. So now they're asking under the delisting offer for the voluntary listing, you need to give exit opportunity. Comment. Now, how I will write, straight away you people write, no, no, it is not required. In case they are going from all stock exchange, it is required. In case they are not going from all stock exchange, it is not required. But I will write in another way. I will write first, voluntary delisting option is given to the company as a voluntary measure to delist itself. The company may delist itself from two way, in two ways. First, from all the stock exchanges. Second, from the stock exchanges, one or two of the stock exchanges, but remaining listed on one stock exchange. In the other cases, if the company is going delisted from all the stock exchanges, the company is required to make it delisted from, uh, sorry, the company is required to give exit of all. But if the company remains listed on the one and again, company is delisting itself from one or two stock exchange, then the company will not be required to give exit of In view of the aforesaid discussion and the regulations, CB regulations, delisting regulation, it is very clear that in certain cases, even the exit opportunity is not required. Now, therefore, the statement is not true as in some cases, the exit opportunity are not required. Now, see, how I change the flow of answer, which you should have written with your application of time. So try to develop this practice at home again and again. This is called practical approach, right? I hope I answered your question very well. Next, moving to the next question. How answers for this? this? Good, Atul, your question was also more or less same, that how answers for descriptive questions can be answered in the required way. So I have given, say, say for example, I discussed with you two questions just on a random basis. And in fact, you notice, like you will agree with my point, we all follow the first approach, claim an answer. Hardly we focus that why not we write the answer strategically. Let's first keep the narrative. See, when I'm going or I started a class with you, I'm just giving a practical example with you. For every chapter, if you recollect, I used to give an overall scenario in five minutes. Isn't it? Yes or no? Everyone, let's now it's a chat. So chat session. Question answer. Yes. Why? Because I used to give the overall scenario to you people to ensure what to ensure, sir? To ensure that. The remaining provision, when I will discuss about the detail of the chapter, you will be able to focus, you will be able to understand. Otherwise, if I do not give overall or oversight, you will lose. So, similar thing is in the question answer. Whenever you answer, first give a brief narrative, then start writing the answer. Right? 
next question like uh, one again question was there is of yours but then unfortunately i couldn't get the elaborate like your question is how can we how to deal with problems questions means i couldn't make it out do you mean to say problems question means practical okay so you mean to say practical see practical problems again see for example practical problems from where it will come it will be mostly from buyback it will be mostly from say for example pricing calculation of ipo it will be mostly calculating of differential now be sure on the regulatory part like on the buyback we all know 25% is the cap 25% of what paid up capital fee is so that way amount will be given in your book that amount will be given in your curriculum try to figure it out try to answer it like say for example differential price we all know 10% discount can be given if the upper end is given the lower price you will get see problems becomes a problem when you don't know the regulatory part and in fact in your study mat like icsi study mat i will must appreciate comment that we have quite a number of illustrative exercise even when the regulators are concerned with the practical approach also like buyback you will find delisting you will find ipo you will find so try to have a look at the illustrative part even same with the green shoe option like green shoe option today we have discussed but then after this session you should uh, go through that illustrative study so that yes it is in your mind see nothing is going out of that context it will be only from that and even in situations say for example i am saying you are going blank you are not able to understand that what exactly the practical problem is seen those scenario even i will say you know the regulatory aspect first try the regulatory aspect a brief not one page this one part and then try to start solving on the basis of those regulatory aspect also even on the basis of your practical approach on the basis of your approach method that yes to this extent you are right you will be validated or you will be answered or you will be honored with the marks till that point because at least you are following what exactly the mention of the regulatory aspect but if you are not sure about that you may wrong say for example 25% now you don't know paid up capital free reserve or that should be calculated whether the number of shares like it is talking about the capital once you get the capital then you need to divide it by the number of shares now if you do not know that the 10 rupees i have to further divide it by the shares then of course you will go wrong right so the approach should be that more and more and in fact i say icsi study mat me jitne bhi illustrative case studies exercise hai, please do make sure that you complete it right so any further questions like i told you about this strategy i told you about the answering pattern and yes of course at the last one i would like to give advice from my side read the question paper thrice so what are you saying thrice yes right two things if you are having in the mind you will be excellent but how can we be i i, I can give you the 100% assurance that you can be but two things one read the question paper thrice and second one question reading thrice and second is a time management both should be there time management that means you know that you have three hours to make sure you attempt the full paper and this as i said you thrice why because the reason being you know practically i am just correlating with you people just imagine the scenario it happens with everyone when we get the paper at the first instance after looking at the answer we get half a set okay i go i don't know my way it's very difficult take over oh i have not done before so it's like that only in first but in the first reading we get panic i avoid that first second reading what we do we start reading with full mind that okay for ka a aata hai for ka d we know for ka c we know but we don't know for ka b it's like that right absolutely agree or i am saying something different which doesn't happen with you agree correct so this is the flow we approach but third time while well, i recommend after reading two times when you will be reading third time third time you should analyze your mind You say, for example, if you are doing question number four, how much you will spend? Because here you only don't know four marks. 
if you go for five marks, five question number five, then you don't know eight marks. So you should do an analytical. And then what happens at times you will be able to recollect that question you are reading is carefully because at times, say for example, a question has come. Write down the condition for ineligibility for making application for IP. Hear me out completely. Ineligibility for making IP. What happened after reading once or twice? We thought eligibility. Now we have written net asset, ten over net net worth. And after coming at home and after realizing from the friends, oh my God, it was ineligibility. Ineligibility means not debarred, not willful defaulter, not fugitive of offender. But we have written the other. Why? Because in a haphazard manner, we have not read it clearly. We missed out something. It does happen. I like even I get the feedback from the student. They keep saying me, so sir, we have written the other way. So I my specific request is that read the question paper twice and please do take care of the time management because time management will play a crucial role. Attempt all the questions well in the PR. Please do not think that answers are given on the weightage of your book. No, not at all. Answers are given on the weightage of your points, on the weightage of your coverage. Please do focus on that. Nowadays, scenario has changed. Please do focus on that. This is my last advice, or you can say, like you people all are appearing, because I wish that all of you clear it. And at least I will be looking forward to hear you or see, see you sometime in the future. That yes, you have been benefited from this session and the institute initiative. Right? So if we do not have any further questions, we move towards the wind up. I'm sure that you all are like satisfied and uh, at least you, we have been able to cover all those points, right? So with my best wishes, once again, I conclude the session, I once again, as I told you, I convey my best wishes to all of you, that you all succeed in your career and score high as these in at least particularly, I will say on all the papers, but yes, obviously, nonetheless, in SEBI paper as well, the security is there. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your words. Thank you.